G'day and welcome to another episode of Uncle Jimmy's Pool Room. Again, not in the pool room today. We are now actually right in the middle of the sporting precinct. This is called The Bench. It's right next to the Melbourne uh, Storm, Melbourne Football Club and the Victory fantastic. where they train. It is a fantastic yep. facility here and we just saw Harry Kuhl walk past, followed by some Serious. entourage, mate. Huge, huge news. Oh, it's massive news at the moment. We've got Kevin Musket sitting in this cafe over Kevin. there as well. Kevin, Kevin brother, how are you, mate? Brother. We'll try and get him in interview maybe later. Probably not, but we'll try. We'll um, try. Dutchy, it's a huge show today because no cameraman again. It's just you and me, and we are working like a well-oiled machine just quietly. We are, we, but I'm a little bit concerned about uh, football these days and the, these young blokes getting too much coin. What, what are we talking about? Scully getting $2 million up front. What are your thoughts on that? Mate, crazy cash. Crazy cash, but it's funny money because you know what? The AFL has made scope for Greater Western Sydney to become uh, at least a little bit com competitive in their first year. So give them all this coin and that's why it is what it is. Two million dollars, we agree it's a lot of money because we were on nowhere near that in our final days of playing football <laughs> and, and it hurts us just quietly. I was lucky to get 200,000 let alone two million. but. James McDonald as well, 35 years of age, and he's going to the GWS as an assistant playing coach. Robos Boss Boss, surely you would have got a gig. You've kicked 93 goals for St Joey's this year. Yeah, good luck to my old mate James McDonald. I hope he goes all right up there, but I think he's just going up there to set a culture up. I'm not sure what I'll do for the culture up there. Probably, uh... <laughs> oh, look, I've got to put my own you ties up. absolutely nothing for the culture, let me tell you. Absolutely nothing. Now, Dutchie, absolutely. Let's, let's get on with the show. Yeah, You've yeah. got some exclusive oh, footage mate, again. This, this is huge, absolutely huge. CCTV footage, believe it or not, not. This is of Scully, Tom Scully from Melbourne, number 31. We've got CCTV footage of him in his hotel room doing something a little bit bizarre. Check this out. Well, there you go. Uh, rolling in a bit of cash, Dutchie. <laughs> that was amazing scenes. That's actually real footage, Robbo, isn't really? it? It's yeah. for Rizzle. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious, stuff, hilarious stuff. We are we are quite hilarious here at Uncle Jimmy's Poor Room. Uh, but we like are. I said to you many times before, we have the good oil. And just stick around for an inside scoop yep. at the end of the show. Oh my God, Dutchie's got some good stuff for you. Magic. Talking about good stuff, coming up soon, uh, the EJ Witten Legends Group, which raises a lot of money in, in regards to prostate cancer, they're having a poker tournament. Yeah. Uh, Joey Hashem, we know, is a famous poker man, but his brother Tony yeah. is putting this together to raise some money. Yes, and Dutchie, yes. celebrity. We're taking part. We are taking part, and this was fantastic today because we went out and saw some of the Carlton boys, ex and current players, absolute champions of the game. Robbo and I used to be Carlton supporters growing up, so it was fantastic. Um, and we had a chat to them about this particular poker tournament and about Carlton's game leading into the game against West Coast this weekend. It's exciting. Mark Murphy's there. It was wonderful. Check this out. Well, the Dutch is down in Brunswick Street today. Very fashionable, very edgy and grungy down here. The Dutch fits right in. Robbo's behind the camera. The Dutch is taking control. We're here for the poker tournament, the EJ Witten's Poker Tournament at the Fitz Cafe, owned by Mill Hanna. We're going to meet some of the Carlton players, XN Current, superstars of the game. It's going to be fantastic. Let's get in and say good day to them. And here we are inside with Tony Hashem. Now, Tony, tell us what the uh, poker tournament's all about, mate. Well, it's to do with the EJ Witten Foundation, and uh, we're trying to raise as much funds as we can for prostate cancer. And we actually put this together last year, both Ted and I, and we thought it'd be a good synergy between poker players and uh, AFL or footballers. And this year, again, we're doing it the day before the Brownlow on the 25th of September. And we're hoping to have a, a bonanza of the night. Yes, and it is massive. Every single celebrity under the sun is going to be there. It is good fun. And if you're not a poker player, this guy here, everybody knows who Joe Hashem is. He's the brother, all right? He's actually the celebrity of the two, this guy. And finished 37th in the world, was it, uh, recently? Yeah. And also, back-to-back, -back, dual pro player of the year, Australasian, is that right? Yeah, it's pretty much it. Yeah, well, we've got Teddy over there. Can we just cross over for a sec? Sorry, Teddy, to interrupt there, mate. Um, um, what's it like dealing with this bloke, anyway? 
Well, if I can get him to turn up on time to a meeting, it'd be oh, fantastic. No, but you know, he's uh, he's warming to it. He's he's good. No, he's good. He's got a, a lot of uh, good uh, things about him, and he's uh, got some fantastic friends. And we're hoping to you know make this tournament a, a really big one. And of course, we're speaking to the great Teddy Whitten Jr. here. If you didn't already know, this bloke here has uh, done some amazing things for this charity. And how's it all going? It's going really well, Brody. Yes, it's uh, it's growing by the day, and uh, we're a fully national charity now, and raised over five million dollars around the country, doing a lot of great work, and and. Uh hopefully saving a lot of men's lives after the message that we put out there. Yeah, he's doing some great things and we've all seen the EJ Witten's Legends game. Ange Christo's a star every year, we all know that. And he's here today too, we'll have to catch up with him later. We're in Mike's Royalty right here, the Dominator, Wayne Johnson, how are you mate? Yeah, good mate, good. Great, great days, good. Now let's talk about Carlton because we do like talking about them. They're in the finals, you were always playing finals. 89 I remember watching you. Was it the start of the game you went straight out the umpire and told them they had too many blokes in the square? Actually it was 87. 87? 80, 89 I was crippled. Um, uh, 87, uh, yeah it was, we actually, uh, they had a plan to tag all of our players, uh, they're in the bounce and they had one too many in and I just had to wait for a little while until uh, they are ready to bounce the ball, but the remarkable story about that was that Ian Robinson was about to bounce the ball for the first time in four grand finals as an umpire, yeah, and, he didn't, get and to. he didn't get to, then it reported me ten minutes later. <laughs> he hated you for it. Now you're obviously going to take part in a bit of a card game. Uh, how important is it to you to get the message out there about all of this sort of stuff? Look, um, I'm due for a test yep. for, for my prostate. Uh, it's a, I'm, um, I knew the great EJ well. He's a personal friend and uh, yeah, I think we've got to get the message out there loud and clear that uh, the early detection is, is obviously the greatest, the greatest beater of it. So looking forward to it. Not a very good poker player, I'm afraid, yeah. so I might need some tips, Tone. Well, I reckon you'll beat Brody and I because we have no idea. Speaking of kids, the boys that are running around in the Carlton Jumper at the moment, they're going over to West Coast. How do you reckon they'll go? Interesting. Um, yeah, look, I thought they'd win well last week, and they did. Tough test. You know, you've got to pack up, get yourself over to the West Coast, try to beat them at Subiaco, and then come back and hope maybe play Geelong. I don't know, the, the betting tells you they, they don't look a good thing at all. Gibbs is obviously out. It's a tough one. I think they're a good side, West Coast. I think they're a lot better than people think. Their forward press is amazing. They've got plenty of run in them and, got, and their tools are dangerous. So well, I hope Carlton can win. The Judd factor might be it, but I reckon they'll go pretty hard on Judd over there. I don't think, I don't think they'll be letting him off the leash at all. Now we're here with Mark Murphy, the man of the moment, because the Blues got over the line last week and you're, you're flying over to Subiaco in about how long? In about an hour and a half, so I thought I'd just pop in here and have a bit of a chat. Yeah, beautiful. Thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate it. I think you were forced into it, but that's OK. <laughs> um, what, 37 possessions on the weekend, that's, that's, a, that's a highlight for the year, surely? Yeah, 37, uh, it's always good to get a few touches, but um, you yeah, had to do it in the final and get the win was, uh, was great, yeah. Amazing effort and uh, it's a massive, massive win and uh, obviously flying over to Subiaco and, uh, and playing against West Coast Eagles who are in great form. Great, absolutely great, Nick. How do you think you'll shape up against them? Yeah, they, uh, they played some great footy last Saturday against, uh, against Collingwood. Their pressure and tackling was really, really good. So, uh, you know, we'll have to be on top of our game if we uh, want to go over the top of them. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to getting over there in the, in the good weather and um, having a crack over at Subi. Yeah, it'll be a great challenge. And uh, Gibbsy was supposed to come down, I heard, and he's got a bit of a crook shoulder. Uh, he's obviously not playing this week, but it will be a chance if you get through. Yeah, if we get through, he'll be playing next week, I would have thought. So um, I think he's just in the hyperbaric chamber uh, a couple, t couple times a day. So, uh, yeah, he's trying to do everything right to, uh, to get himself up for next week. So hopefully we can, uh, yeah, get through the Saturday and, um, yeah, the big fella can uh, turn up next, uh, next Saturday. And if you're not playing in the prelim, you're obviously going to be involved in the poker tournament. Uh, it's getting bigger and bigger every year. Now, I heard the Fevelinko has left a little bit of, uh, I, I suppose, a, a, a stamp or his print on the club in terms of his, his card playing, is that right? Am I right? Uh, it, was, it was very big about four or five years ago and Fev was right up there in, t in terms of uh, being one of the better players. So um, yeah, we, there's not too much poker going on at the club at the moment, but um, yeah, no doubt that big Fevelenko has left a bit of a mark there, but um, yeah, I'm not sure we really will be turning up next Sunday or not, but it um, yeah. be interesting to see if the big fella's there. Yeah, beautiful, mate. Well, uh, I'm just looking down at the, oh, the I'm knee. My yeah, well, I'm just look, actually looking down at the <laughs> knee bandage. Uh, let's just have a look down here. This could be an inside scoop. He's got a little bit of an injury here. So if you're a West Coast Eagles uh, follower, uh, take note. No, no, it's got, what's going on with it? No, you just explain oh, to us. It's just a compression um, sort of bandage rather than you're wearing the, the sock that um, you probably would have worn a fair, time, fair yep. few times throughout your career. It's just yep. a new way of when you fly, so uh, just a compression bandage. Just the ultimate professional is Mark Murphy, and uh, what a season he's had. Um, chance for the Brownlow? 
Uh, no chance. I think um, I think Juddy is at a dollar eighty or something, whatever it is. So, but um, I think he'll probably take it out. But I reckon Scotty Pendlebury might yeah. might uh, sneak yeah. a few votes for for Collingwood. Well, I think Mark Murphy or Scotty Pendlebury could be one at odds. So, uh, sporting bet, no other bet than sporting bet. Make sure you get on it. Um, thanks, Murph, uh, for uh, coming on the show. Even though you didn't really know that you were going to come on the show till you got here, but thank you very much. No, I had no idea, but it's great to be on. Cheers. <laughs> Now, we can't leave the Fitz Cafe without saying good day to the great man, Mill Hanna, the owner of the Fitz Cafe, obviously, and uh, Carlton great. Now, I was a Carlton supporter growing up, and I'd have to say, Mill, you're in my top three players uh, when I was a supporter. Um, but let's talk about the cafe. H how's the cafe going? Because you've been here 20 years, right? Yeah, 20 years. No, it's going, going great, actually. We've um, probably had the best two years we've had. Fantastic. And uh, do you have any ties or do you do anything with the, with the Carlton Footy Club these days? No, not really. Look, I sort of, you know, obviously keep a close interest in what's going on. My, you know, some of my best mates are sort of heavily involved in the club, yep. from president to to, um, to coach to director. So, so it's always good to see your friends do well. Yeah, sure. Got a little bit sentimental there, uh, did Robbo and the yeah. Dutch, because we were such massive Carlton supporters in the day. Yeah, oh, we were. And uh, one of my favourite players was actually Mill Hanna, believe oh, it or not. Ukrainian. And my mum's favourite player was the Dominator. She's Dom. obsessed with the Dominator. She thought he could play and thought he was handsome as well. <laughs> now, inside scoop. Uh, let's go straight to it. <laughs> Bryce Gibbs, we know he's got a bad shoulder, uh, not making the trip to West Coast. Uh, we've heard that it's a four-week injury. If it was a regular season, wouldn't play for that many, that many. Ooh. But if they get through the West Coast, jab that sucker up and he'll probably play. Well, they might target him in that final if they get through. Uh, Who knows? Uh, unfortunately for the young man, he's a great player, Brycey. Let's talk about finals football. Those two games are occurring this weekend. We're staying here in Melbourne first. Yep. Sydney versus Hawthorne. Who do you think? Sydney in peak form. Simple as that. Yep, love it. I'm going to go for Sydney too. Over to the West, who do you think uh, is going to come home with the Chockers there? West Coast always hard to beat at home, and I just think if Cox plays, definitely will win against Carlton, who have had only a six-day break and have probably celebrated a little bit too hard this week. The Dutch and Robbo agree on everything this week. I'm going to go for West Coast too. Let's go to Sporting Bet, uh, Dutchies Sporting Bet, Bet of the Week. What do you like? I am going to go the double. It's Sydney into West Coast Eagles, OK? On Sporting Bet, you can actually get that for $3.92 as we speak. I'm on the phone there just checking the odds. $3.92, big odds for that double. Unbelievable. You just top Sporting Bet in and there you go. You're right onto it. And I'm looking at my odds right here. I like the Hawthorne-Sydney game. Going to go for Sydney. Uh, 1 to 39 points. That's a margin bet. $2.94. Five. They are good odds. There is no better bet than a sporting bet, Dutchie. Have, You've got something. I have. Me. I'd have to cut you off. Mark Stevens and a few of the uh, the journos there at the moment have been tweeting about Alan Didac possibly missing the final. You don't uh, like the journos at the moment, no, do you? I, I don't mind the journos. I just, um, you know, like the, yeah, we won't go into that, but Alan Didac will play the preliminary final. He's had one average game and he's had he's averaged 29 possessions in the three or four games leading into the final. So that is just a ridiculous call from those guys. So, boys, think about it before you say yeah. those things, okay? Dutchie, I would like to say Adam Goods. What an absolute oh, sensation he's been. Now, I mean, he'd be a chance for Brownlow, wouldn't he? Big chance for the Brownlow. He'll come home in a flurry. Seven out of the last eight games have been best ons, according to the Herald Sun. Um, and that other game was second best on. So, you know, look, he might get 20 or... 20 to 24 votes in the last half of the year. In the last it. half of the Get year. on a spawning bet because there's some good odds on there about yep. Brownlow futures. Uh, he might be a uh, worthy, yep. you know, put a bit of dosh on that. You might see something quite yep. special there. Now, speaking about horses, yes. uh, we've got our syndicate. How's that going? We've got our syndicate going. and we it's sold something. We, we've, we've sold a few shares and it's going really well. There's only a few left, so get in quick. Trudy Smith has won the Nick Maxwell signed jumper. Congratulations to Trudy. She was the first person to actually buy a share, so mm -hmm. she gets the jumper. And this thing's quick. It's, it's obviously been trained by the Lee Friedman stables which is massive okay it was because he, he is one of the best going around oh, Robbo. Just quietly we know that name and we know it well yeah. if you want to have a great time over the spring carnival with us buy into one of these horses with us yep. we're going to have a flurry on them we're going to see yes. some money come our way hopefully it's been a huge week mate yeah. uh, really yeah. enjoyed it would like to thank our sponsors Sasser Securities, Peter Worth, Sporting Bet, uh, Seek and Compare Insurances yeah. The list goes on for insurance uh, for our uh, sponsors. We just uh, we're we're um, in uh, demand. <laughs> we are in massive demand. Let's be honest. We're going that well. It's ridiculous at the moment. We are getting hit after hit. And That's thank right. thank, you thank you to you guys. No no thank you. Viewers. We love you. Thank you. You know that. You're doing such a great job for us and making us a lot of money. If we could give you all a cuddle, uh, we most definitely would. Uh, just be comfortable in the knowledge that we'd give you a kiss on the cheek if you were here with us right now. Boy or girl, we don't discriminate. We'll see you next week on Uncle Jimmy's Pool Room where some more finals is happening. Maybe oh, yeah. we'll get into another team's uh, inner sanctum. Who yes. knows? Because we have that <laughs> ability. <laughs>
Dutty. Love you, mate. See you next week. I oh, love you, boss.